Coming up on today's show, we bring you news of what has to be the most affordable highway capable electric car to ever go on sale in North America. GMC gets ready to reveal the Hummer EV this autumn and the Sony Vision S electric car edges ever closer to maybe, just maybe, becoming a production car. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another episode of Transport Evolved News. It's hard to believe that we're already in August and with CES confirming this week that it's going virtual for next year, well, I think this year is just going to continue flying by in a really surreal way. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how to join them and how to accelerate the switch to electric today by going to electricauto.org. One of the most consistent criticisms of electric vehicles is that they're just too expensive to buy. While the cost of buying a new electric car has dropped significantly in the last 10 years, you still can't get an entry-level electric car at entry-level car prices. This could be about to change, though, with Candy USA announcing that it's going to begin sales of the Chinese-made four-seat Candy K27 electric car this year. The starting price? $20,499 on the road before any incentives. While it's not exactly powerful, Candy says it has a top speed of 63 miles per hour and a 100 miles claimed range. There's no rapid charging, but if you're desperate to get on the road in an electric car, this could be one possible option. The order books open on August 18th. Lucid continued its drive towards launching the Lucid Air luxury sedan this week by confirming that at launch, Every Lucid Air will come with Lucid Dream Drive, its own variant of Autopilot, a system that uses both LiDAR and driver monitoring and has a claimed first for the industry. Dream Drive will be upgradable via over-the-air software updates. Lucid says that the Lucid Air will initially ship with level two autonomous capabilities at launch, but will be able to get level three and beyond in the future via over-the-air updates. While it seems to be following a similar path to Tesla's autopilot development, starting with lower levels of autonomy before upgrading in the future, it's worth noting that Lucid's system tracks driver attention. Autopilot only currently checks for their hands on the wheel. Since Tesla cancelled plans to make Model Y Standard Range and Standard Range Plus, we've been waiting for news of a new promised entry-level model, the Tesla Model Y Long Range Rear Wheel Drive. This week, we got the first piece of news relating to that, but not what you might expect. You see, Electrek reported midweek that while the Model Y Long Range Rear Wheel Drive hasn't appeared yet on Tesla's configuration tool, it now appears in Tesla's loan calculator, it has a sticker price of 48,000 US dollars. That's only $2,000 or so less than the Tesla long range all wheel drive and $3,000 more than the $45,000 price that Elon Musk has been bandying about. Since pricing isn't official yet though, that figure could change. And I'm guessing that this might just be a temporary placeholder until final launch information is confirmed. Following what was a pretty uninspiring launch event earlier this summer, one which was frankly more of a political rally than a car launch, Lordstown Motors has published a video showcasing some of the things it hopes the Lordstown Endurance pickup will ultimately be used for. Rather than go for the high-end luxury adventure market like Rivian has done, Lordstown is aimed squarely at self-employed people, small business owners and fleet operators. And as a consequence, the video, which has a working man narrative, highlights the types of duties that people may use a pickup truck for. It is great to see more video of the endurance in motion, but this is still a prototype as I understand it, and there's still an awful lot of things we don't yet know about this new pickup. Come on, guys, give us a spec sheet. Talking of pickups, General Motors' GMC brand is continuing its ramp up towards the big reveal of the rebirth of the Hummer brand. And now we have an expected reveal date for this autumn. Publishing a new teaser video this week, GMC confirmed that production of the Hummer EV truck will begin a year after its pre-production debut in 2021. 
The latest video shows a silhouette of the truck for the first time, and it's most certainly taken on that classic Hummer design. There's high arches, boxy lines, and that unmistakable long, flat roofline. With up to 1,000 horsepower and 11,500 pound-feet of torque, this truck will be built for power and performance, and GM is claiming a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 3 seconds. We'll bring you more info when we have it. When COVID-19 hit the United States, the US federal government passed a massive stimulus act designed to not only provide tax breaks to families, but also, on paper at least, provide tax breaks and forgivable loans to businesses so that they could continue to pay their employees, even if their places of business were temporarily shuttered. We've covered some of the companies that have taken those funds on this channel before, but this week we learned, via an SEC filing, that Tesla was also a recipient of the federal funding. The funds helped Tesla offset any of the losses it incurred due to the Fremont facility being closed for six weeks. But where it gets controversial is the fact that Elon Musk himself has been speaking out against further federal bailouts, stating on Twitter this week as the effects of the previous act are coming to an end, and people are now facing both unemployment, no assistance, and perhaps even no home, that, quote, another stimulus package is not in the interests of the people. Hmm. The second-generation Kia eSoul, or Soul EV, depending on where you are in the world, is already proving popular with customers. And those who have driven them in markets where it's on sale, like in Canada, Europe, and parts of Asia, are very complimentary. Yet this week, it seems Kia has yet again pushed back any plans to launch the new Kia eSoul in the US. It's cancelled plans for a late 2020 launch and is telling news outlets that it won't arrive until at least 2021. While Kia isn't saying for sure if the eSoul has been completely cancelled for the US, evidence online, namely a removal of a dedicated web page for the car, seems to suggest that Kia has indeed decided it's not going to make the eSoul available anymore. Since it's already on sale in Canada, this is particularly frustrating to see the model pushed back again. Earlier this week, we published a video discussing why the Tesla Model 3 was not selling well in Japan when it was dominating sales charts elsewhere in the world. And to do that, we used 2019 sales data as the basis for that statement. But data published this week, which many of you noted in the comments, show that the Tesla Model 3 is no longer the leader in plug-in car sales in Europe. Instead, the Renault Zoe is overtaking it by a significant margin. During the month of June, the Renault Zoe came out top in the plug-in sales charts, selling 10,342 examples to the Model 3's 7,224. But that's not all. Overall, European car sales fell during June, down 24% year-on-year. But plug-in sales grew 95% year-on-year, setting new records for all plug-in sales. Well done, guys. As you may know, I am a fan of travel on two wheels, and I think there's nothing better for travel around major cities than an electric motorcycle or moped. And having experienced the thrill of renting a moped and traveling around San Francisco for a day, thanks, Scoot, I expected new rental moped share service in New York, now by the name of Revel, to take off pretty quickly. But the service has just announced it's temporarily suspending all of its rentals after a second death involving its scooters in as many weeks. It's not clear why the fatalities happened, and I will say that having driven in New York, I'd never want to ride there myself, as New Yorkers seem not quite as motorcycle friendly as they are in other cities around the world. As I've said before, I think motorcycle and moped share services are best enjoyed when you're already an experienced rider. I suspect when you're not an experienced rider, things can go bad very quickly. On behalf of the entire Transport Evolved team, we send our sympathies to those who died. And now it's time for short shorts. Although the stock market took a major tumble this week, Tesla was able to raise more than $700 million in debt financing this week by selling bonds tied to customer leases. The bonds were AAA rated and mature in just over a year. Toyota may have been focused on hydrogen fuel cell cars, but this week its head of powertrain and batteries said that its solid-state battery development is on track for commercial mass-scale production to begin sometime before 2025. 
Talking of batteries, Panasonic confirmed this week that it's working to raise the energy density of the 2170 battery cells it makes for Tesla at Giga Reno. The battery capacities will increase by 20% over the next five years, with a cobalt-free version coming in just two or three years' time. The US EPA Inspector General is investigating whether the reversal of Obama-era fuel efficiency standards by the current Trump administration violated governmental rules. It is suspected that proper record-keeping, transparency and docketing did not take place. A German off-road specialist has published a video to its YouTube channel this week showcasing its new lift kit for the Tesla Model 3. Yeah, that's right. If getting a lowering kit isn't your thing, you can now take your Model 3 off-road with this off-the-shelf package. And if I'm honest, it seems that lifting Teslas is now really a big thing, as Brian at i1 Tesla has just fitted a lift kit to his brand new Tesla Model Y in order to take it off-roading. I love the idea, but I'm not sure I'd want to do it to a Tesla, knowing how Tesla is about vehicle modifications. Honda has been awarded a patent submitted a few years ago for a new battery casing for use in an all-electric version of a Honda Cub. Since the concept E-Cub was debuted back in 2018 or thereabouts, we've seen very little since, so here's hoping it actually becomes a reality. Rivian has published more teaser videos of its pre-production R1T undergoing further testing in Arizona. This time, the video focuses on the expected performance of the R1T. Rivian also reiterated this week that it aims to begin deliveries of the R1T next year. A German company by the name of Electric Brands has showcased a vehicle called the e -Bussy. And though, please don't go looking in the arse end of nowhere for the slang meaning of that term. The e -Bussy is a modular platform with bodies that can be swapped out in a few minutes. Power and performance isn't great, but then it's not designed for fast highway use. Hyundai is reportedly looking into increasing production of its Kona and Ionic electric vehicles exclusively for the Korean market after several months of continued dominance there by Tesla. It's not clear if this will result in lower availability of these two models elsewhere in the world. With a Cadillac Lyric EV event set to happen in less than a week's time, GM's luxury brand is upping the hype. This week, it released a few more teaser images, as well as a teaser of the Cadillac Crest, all illuminated, looking very pretty. We'll find out more on Thursday, August 6th, so watch this space. General Motors and EVgo have announced a massive joint plan to triple the number of EVgo rapid chargers in the US by adding 2,700 new charging locations over the next five years. After years and years of not investing in EV charging, it appears GM has changed its mind on the matter. Electric car critics often cite super cold weather as being something that electric cars just can't deal with. But this week, electric car owners in Alaska spoke to the state's public broadcast network about how well EVs can cope in 40 below temperatures. They say the cold weather is not a problem. We all know, I'm sure, that the Tesla Model X has a pretty neat party trick involving those falcon wing doors and a Christmassy music light show. Well, as Tesla Bjorn showed this week on his YouTube channel, so does the Xpeng P7. But unlike Tesla's version, which apparently includes copyrighted music, the Xpeng P7 has its very own composed music for the purpose. GM published the latest in a series of photographs this week detailing the progress being made at the brand new lithium ion battery facility it's building alongside LG Chem. Called Ultium LLC, the new venture will manufacture Ultium batteries for all of GM's future electric vehicles. Fisker has announced this week that it's now received more than 7,062 reservations for its promised ocean electric crossover. Set to be built on the Volkswagen MEB platform, Fisker said that it will ultimately be joined by four other models. Amazon has published details of a massive new distribution center in Essen, Germany. There will be more than 150 electric delivery vehicles based there, but in total, the site will have charging for more than 340 electric vehicles. Mercedes-Benz is readying itself to debut the EQS electric sedan later this year, and thus we've seen some snippets dribbled in and out in recent weeks. This week, we learned that the car is promised to offer a range in excess of 700 kilometers per charge on the WLTP test cycle, which is known for still being a little optimistic. 
Tesla has released its most recent safety report showing improvements year on year with its autopilot system. It reports a registered accident for every 4.53 million miles of autopilot activated driving versus one every 479,000 miles in regular cars without the technology. Battery specialist Northvolt has managed to raise 1.6 billion US dollars this week through debt financing, allowing it to continue its plans to supply one quarter of all automotive grade lithium ion battery cells used in Europe. It's building a massive production plant in northern Sweden. And those are your short shots. There will be more next week. In the last couple of years, there has been a real explosion in the number of specialist firms building capable, affordable electric two-wheelers. And New Zealand-based Ubico is just one example. But instead of your standard rear-wheel drive motorcycle for just getting around town, Ubico makes off-road capable all-wheel drive electric utility bikes. They dominate where most electric motorcycles and scooters would simply give up. And this week we learned that the New Zealand Defence Force is trialling these homegrown electric bikes for off-road use in the military. The New Zealand Army, Navy and Air Force will each get to test them out. And because they're far lighter than most motorcycles and even most electric motorcycles, these electric mopeds are ideal for use as they can be lifted into and out of other vehicles and airplanes extremely easily. And finally. Back in January, before COVID-19 spoiled all of our plans for the year, we were present when Sony surprised the world with its Vision S electric car. Described as a, quote, technology demonstrator to showcase all of Sony's automotive hardware operating in one place, we were told at the time that Sony had no plans to bring the Vision S to market. But in recent months, we've seen several times a hint that maybe just maybe that's changing, with Sony delivering the car to engineers in Tokyo this week for public road testing. Originally, Sony said that it had no plans to put the Vision S onto any public highway, so this is extremely exciting news. It also suggests that maybe, just maybe, Sony could end up making a car after all. With dual 200 kilowatt motors and impressive performance, well, I just want to ride. How about you? And on that optimistic note, Let's end today's show. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship as always. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us all making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator yourself, find local monthly meetups to attend, or just find EV owners to talk to about making your own switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. I would love it if you'd like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And if you do feel able, please consider supporting us using any of the links below. And if you can't support us financially, just know that watching and interacting with our content really does help those algorithms. So if you do, thank you very much. We've been making some more tweaks to our studio sets, so let us know what you think over the next few weeks. And if you've noticed something a little different in today's video and the last few videos we've made, it's because we've just purchased a brand new camera and we're still learning things, so please bear with us. Keep your eyes peeled too next week as we have some super exciting top secret news about a project that's been taking place near to us in Oregon. We're filming on Sunday and we're going to be the second news outlet that will get to report on it. I'll be back next week with more great content for you all to enjoy. But in the meantime, stay healthy, work to make the world a fairer, safer place for us all to live in, strive for equality, be kind to one another, wash your hands, and please wear that mask. Science doesn't lie. Keep evolving.